Sporanthropus is a genus of extinct hominins, also known as robust Australopithecines. They were bipedal hominids that probably descended from the gracile Australopithecine hominids 2.7 million years ago. Members of this genus are characterized by robust craniodental anatomy, including gorilla-like sagittal cranial crests which suggests strong muscles of mastication, and broad, grinding herbivorous teeth. However, Baranthropus skulls lack the transverse cranial crests that are also present in modern gorillas. Discovery A partial cranium and mandible of Baranthropus robustus was discovered in 1938 by a schoolboy, Gert Blanche, at Cromtri B in South Africa. It was described as a new genus and species by Robert Broom of the Transvaal Museum. The site has been excavated since 1993 by Francis Thackeray of the Transvaal Museum. A date of at least 1.95 million years has been obtained for Cromdry B. Baranthropus boisea was discovered by Mary Leakey on July 17, 1959, at the FLK Bed I site of Olduve Gorge in Tanzania. Mary was working alone, as Lewis Leakey was ill in camp. She rushed back to camp and, at the news, Lewis made a remarkable recovery. They refrained from excavating until Des Bartlett had photographed the site. In his notes Lewis recorded a first name, Titano Homo Mirabilis, reflecting an initial impression of close human affinity. Lewis and Mary began to call it, Dear Boy. Recovery was halted on August 7. Dear Boy was found in context with the old Owen tools and animal bones. The fossil was published in Nature dated August 15, 1959, but due to a strike of the printers the issue was not released until September. In it Lewis placed the fossil in Broom's Australopithecine family, creating a new genus for it, Zinjanthropus, species Boisea. Zinj is an ancient Arabic word for the coast of East Africa and Boisea referred to Charles Boise, an anthropological benefactor of the Leakeys. Lewis based his classification on 20 differences from Australopithecus. Broom had died in 1951 but Dart was still living. He is said to have wept for joy on Louis's behalf on being personally shown Zinge, which Lewis and Mary carried around in a tin. Lewis had considered Broom's Baranthropus genus but rejected it because he believed Zinge was in the Homo ancestral stock but Baranthropus was not. He relied heavily on the larger size of Zinge's canines. At that time paleoanthropology was in an overall mood to lump and was preaching against splitting. Consequently, the presentation of Zin during the 4th Pan-African Congress of Prehistorians in July in the then Belgian Congo, at which Lewis was forced to read the delayed nature article, nearly came to grief for Lewis over the creation of a new genus. Dart rescued him with the now famous joke, what would have happened if Mrs. Pless had met Dear Boy one dark night? The battle of the name raged on for many years and drove a wedge between Lewis and Sir Wilfred Legros Clark, from 1955, who took the Paranthropus view. On the other hand, it brought the Leakeys and Dr. Melville Belgrovner of the National Geographic Society together. The Leakeys became international figures and had no trouble finding funds from then on. The Zinch question ultimately became part of the Australopithecus Baranthropus question. Description All species of Baranthropus were bipedal, and many lived during a time when species of the genus Homo were prevalent. Baranthropus first appeared roughly 2.7 million years ago. Most species of Baranthropus had a brain about 40% of the size of a modern human. There was some size variation between the different species of Baranthropus, but most stood roughly 1.3 minus 1.4 meters tall and were quite well muscled. Baranthropus is thought to have lived in wooded areas rather than the grasslands of Australopithecus. Baranthropus is thought to be bipedal, based on its anatomical structure in its hips, legs, and feet that resemble both its ancestor, Australopithecus afarensis, and modern humans. The pelvis is similar to a afarensis but the hip joint, including the femoral head and acetabulum are smaller in Baranthropus. 
The similar hip structure between a afarensis and paranthropus implies that they had a similar walking gait, and that paranthropus move like the gracile australopiths. They show anatomical similarity to modern humans in the big toe of their foot and their well-developed plantar aponeurosis. The hallux metatarsal shows increased space for more internal support, and more distal articular surface which causes more connection and support to the other bones in the foot. The extra support in the big toe and extensive plantar aponeurosis shows that Baranthropus had hyperextension of their toes for a toe-off gait. Cycle. Characteristic of modern bipedalism in humans. The behavior of Paranthropus was quite different from that of the genus Homo, in that it was not as adaptable to its environment or as resourceful. Evidence of this exists in the form of its physiology which was specifically tailored to a diet of grubs and plants. This would have made it more reliant on favorable environmental conditions than members of the genus Homo, such as Homo habilis, which would eat a much wider variety of foods. Therefore, because it was a specialist species, it had more difficulty adapting to a changing climate, leading to its extinction. Disputed taxonomy. Evolutionary biologist Richard Dawkins notes, perhaps several different species of robust hominids, and, as usual, their affinities, and the exact number of species, are hotly disputed. Names that have been attached to various of these creatures, Dr. Australopithecus robustus, Australopithecus boisea, and Australopithecus ethiopicus, opinions differ whether the species P. ethiopicus, boisea and P. robustus should be included within the genus Australopithecus. The emergence of the robusts could be either a display of divergent or convergent evolution. There is currently no consensus in the scientific community whether P. Ethiopicus, Boisea and P. Robustus should be placed into a distinct genus, Baranthropus, which is believed to have evolved from the ancestral Australopithecus line. Up until the last half decade, the majority of the scientific community included all the species of both Australopithecus and Paranthropus in a single genus. Currently, both taxonomic systems are used and accepted in the scientific community. However, although Australopithecus robustus and Baranthropus robustus are used interchangeably for the same specimens, some researchers, beginning with Robert Broom, and continuing with people such as Bernard A., would think that there is a difference between Australopithecus and Paranthropus, and that there should be two genera, occurrence. For the most part the Australopithecus species A, Afarensis, Africanus, and A, Anamensis either disappeared from the fossil record before the appearance of early humans or seem to have been the ancestors of Homo habilis, yet P, Boisea and P, Ethiopicus continued to evolve along a separate path distinct and unrelated to early humans. Baranthropus shared the Earth with some early examples of the Homo genus, such as H. Habilis, Agaster, and possibly even H. Erectus. Australopithecus afarensis and A. Anamensis had, for the most part, disappeared by this time. There were also significant morphological differences between Australopithecus and Baranthropus, although the differences were found on the cranial remains. The postcranial remains were still very similar. Baranthropus was more massively built craniodentally and tended to sport gorilla-like sagittal crests on the cranium which anchored massive, temporalis muscles of mastication. Intelligence Species of Baranthropus had smaller brain cases than Homo, yet they had significantly larger brain cases than Australopithecus. Baranthropus is associated with stone tools both in southern and eastern Africa, although there is considerable debate whether they were made and utilized by these robust Australopithecines or contemporaneous Homo. Most believe that early Homo was the tool maker, but hand fossils from Swarthcrins, South Africa, indicate that the hand of Baranthropus robustus was also adapted for precision grasping and tool use.
Most Baranthropus species seem almost certainly not to have used language nor to have controlled fire, although they are directly associated with the latter at Swarthcrin's diet. In 2011 Thury, Serling of the University of Utah and colleagues, published a study in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences of their work with the carbon isotopes in the enamel of 24 teeth from 22. Baranthropus individuals who lived in East Africa between 1.4 million and 1.9 million years ago. Their results suggest that Baranthropus boisea dined more heavily on C4 plants than any other human ancestor or human relative studied to date.